how's going? How's going? It is I again. And today we are talking everything around finance and uh, in the house, I got the money guy, and we're wanting to talk about bond origination in particular. And um, I've got Christian. Christian has been with me. I've been with him. We've been with each other talking about literally bringing in money uh, from the banks and all the... <clears throat> And all the other financial services uh, that are out there to make sure that me as a property investor, he finds the best fit money for me. Well, I'm going to introduce Christian. For some of you who don't know him, Christian, welcome and how's it going? Great. Thanks and you, TJ. Wonderful to be here again. Awesome stuff. The topic that we want to talk about is how much do bond originators make in South Africa? Because I think this is one of those conversations where we see bond originators making money, or maybe they don't even make money. But the question is, how much do bond originators make in South Africa? And is it the same with across the world out there? Do we even have bond originators? But let me speak to the guy who is doing bond origination. And uh, before we jump on, on to that, to see whether how much does he make, let's start to talk about who is he first? So Christian, who are you? Well, I'm a bond originator, <laughs> first and foremost. Uh, but yeah, uh, my name is Christian Janssen and I own a franchise in At360 Finance. So we're a mortgage origination business uh, primarily, but we're also focused on other types of financing on uh, the, in the commercial space as well. But my core uh, business focus is on residential bond origination, where I go to the banks on a prospective purchaser's behalf to get them the best possible deal. Okay, good. So I've always seen you as the money guy uh, because I bring deals to you and I say to you, Christian, this is what we are looking for. We're looking for a million rand. We're looking for five million. We're looking for X amount of money. And you go out there and you go and find that money in the right parameters within the banking system, within the financial system. Uh, so you don't just work with banks, but you work with non-banks that are also giving out loans to people like me. Yeah, so uh, our core client base, apart from the, the purchaser being the, the real client, uh, but our strategic partners are the banks. They are... Uh, the most likely to give you the best possible rate because uh, it will be prime linked and closer to the, the prime lending rate as opposed to your private lenders who can almost start charging uh, knee breaking types of interest rates and take the lion's share out of a deal. So uh, we, we go and we find the right type of financier based on what your requirements are. Uh, in the end, if you can, can come right with the banks themselves, then uh, you're in it with the money because your returns will be better because you've got less profit to share with somebody else. And you're not buying yourself into a partner. You are getting somebody to just give you money in, within certain parameters, of course. I said, in a nutshell, this is actually a job. You, I mean, you, you, there is a, a activity that needs to be done. There's tasks that needs to be done you need to be trained, you need to know what you are doing for you to be able to go and source the money. Yeah, it is a job, but it's a job that's focused on one's own energy and input. Like from my side, if I don't have people coming to me, I don't have a business. The biggest challenge for any bond originator is uh, what they call your pipeline. Where are you going to get your deals from? How are you going to go about keeping those, uh, keeping customers uh, after you've gotten them. And the biggest challenge at all points will be to get the customers. Mm, okay. So, so Christian, it almost sounds like this is one can, it's not just a job, but you can actually take it as a business because now if you're talking about a pipeline, uh, potentially as a bond originator, you actually need to have clients, you need to start doing advertising and things like that. I'm just thinking, the reason why I'm asking you this is, I think people always ask that question, how much are you making? But there's very little people that always ask, what's the effort you need to make the money, right? 
so let's talk about that side of the business in terms of the effort that is required. Um, if we are talking about the, the, on the thinking of how much do bond originators make, right? But I don't want us to talk about that. I actually want us to go back and say, what is the effort that is required for us to make X? So let's take an example. It is you today. You totally knew nothing about bond originations. Walk me through the process of how can one actually become a bond originator before we start to, uh, talking about the earnings part. So to become a bond originator, first and foremost, you need to develop some knowledge into how the banks work, how the, the transactions work. And that's also why you'll find that most of the originators out on the market start in the banks and they then, within time, move out. I mean, your typical home loans consultant internally, like, well, I, I worked for APSA Home Loans for some time prior to moving into uh, the origination space. Uh, and it's, it's a good example of that, where you start learning what the process entails, how it works, how to present an application, and then out of that, you are able to advise a prospective client and position the, the transaction so that you can get a successful outcome. Because we paid on successful registration of a bond. So first and foremost, you need to get a bond approval and you need to know how that works, what goes into it. It's not all rocket science, and I'm happy to take anyone through the entire process. It's knowledge that is readily available, but you do find some of the, you almost say the old guard tries to keep it as a very closely guarded secret, but it's it's fairly simple, You but you have to understand it. Okay, so, so if we are to go into um, uh, the detail of how one who become a bond originator. Uh, you're saying that at the beginning, it might be worth it if you understand the banking system. Uh, but I mean, not everyone has been pre uh, privileged to work for banks. Um, and there's some other banks that are also coming in here that don't offer good training, you know. Uh, so if you are working for a good bank that is offering you the good training that you need, and when you have left, then you can start to become a bond originator. So at the crust of being a bond originator, Christian, it's all about understanding what the client wants. So when we are talking about that is, I almost want to ask, can any bond originator take any deal to any banks? I don't think so though. You can, but will every bond originator get exactly the same outcome? That's, that's the biggest question, because you right. need to know how to position it. And certain banks have certain appetites and certain approaches to transactions. And uh, the reality of it is, and you also coming out of the banking space, you know that everything is divided in its own little silos. So as you work in home loans, for example, you've got X, Y, and Z that you can do, cannot do, that you have to do. And it's very, very closely governed to also ensure that the banks conform to all of their regulatory uh, requirements. And that means that your entry point as you submit an application starts off with the scoring clerk literally running down a tick list bit by bit to ensure that all the documents are there. And that can lead to questions that you have to be prepared and able and ready to answer. So it's, it's part of the... The, the whole game around it is to start understanding how these systems and their approaches work to it. Because you can submit a transaction to a bank and they, they'll outright reject it. One of our big banks is a very good example with that. With uh, my typical clientele, I almost never go to them. What do you mean by that? Um, so, it almost sounds like you, you've got your own niche of clients that you hang out with. Sort of, yes. <laughs> so my wife always jokes and says, Christian loves being mentally challenged. And <laughs> it is the case when I look at my business because I primarily deal with property investors and property investors purchase an entity structures. And an entity structure is not something that all of the banks will look at. Uh, like primarily 
NetBank does not entertain any applications to an entity that is not already banking with them via the origination space. So we don't even bother submitting those to them. I think it almost goes back to the point that you spoke about to say, if, if someone, you know, you, you, you've been at the bank and you, maybe you work for one bank and now you say, hey, I want to be a bond originator. And now you're faced with presenting your client to maybe five, six banks at the same time. Uh, and by the way, there's, there's plenty of banks in South Africa, it's not just five. Um, now in that position, if you don't know what the other banks are offering, you might actually be uh, in the way of you making money for yourself. Remember we're talking about how much, how much money do bond originators make? You know, they, we, we want to make sure that you're getting maximum amount. But for you to be able to get that maximum amount, there's a bit of learning that is needed here. That's, that's you know, what my understanding. How do you then get into the space of understanding what the next bank and the next bank and the next bank is offering? Because, I mean, like for instance, recently FMB, they just launched what? In some newspapers, they're saying it's up to eight people that can finance. In it's another article, I saw it's up to 12. So, like, you know, how do you get to understand these products out there? So I'm smiling because you just gave me a flashback to when I moved into the origination space uh, back in 2007, <laughs> where it was a massive baptism of fire. If I just think back to my first transaction, I knew exactly how to pitch it to APSA. And then with FME Standard Bank and NetBank, uh, the quality control clerk in our office came back to me and she's like, what are you doing? And all I could say was, I don't know. <laughs> so it's learn by doing. Learning by doing. And, and, and for a lot of people, that phrase there that you've just thrown in, learn by doing, um, we almost just want to make the money long before we even start doing. Uh, and sometimes we jump into it because we want to, to, to make the money. Would you recommend that, you know, for some people who's wanting to be a bond originator, because if you're asking how much is a bond originator making, you potentially maybe want to be a bond originator, or you thinking that maybe they are ripping me off on my deal. And those are the two things that I want to ask them. Who, in our market, who pays, who, who pays you? So the banks pay me. From their point of view, we are basically cutting out a lot of marketing expense and a lot of costs from a staff complement point of view, because we do a lot of pre-screening and it's the old adage of garbage in, garbage out. I will not submit a, with respect, garbage transaction where I know that the chances of being approved is maybe 10% because I'm wasting my time, I'm wasting my resources, and it actually has an adverse effect on my relationship with the different banking consultants. So you want to start building up those relationships to the point where they know, okay, well, it's a, like, especially with my little niche, it's a Christian transaction. So let's just look at one, two, and three before we query and delay the transaction further. It doesn't always happen that way, but it makes for very constructive uh, conversations. And one of the big things there also in terms of people wanting to become originators, it is a game of patience. If you look at your turnaround time, I mean, you know, how long does it take to buy a property, wait for it to transfer? I only get paid on transfer. And if you look at an originator's commissions, as opposed to that, what the estate agents are earning, it's chalk and cheese. Our game is based on volumes. So the, the typical estate agent will see a uh, commission of say 5%. And in the bond origination space, uh, dependent on whom you're contracted with, it will range somewhere from between 0.2% to 0.8%. Maybe a little bit higher as well, but that also involves more effort and maybe your own staff complement into it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you say a point two? Yes. So point two of a million rand, point two thousand of, of um, 
500,000. I mean, we, in the market, there's houses for 500,000 or even less, right? Yeah. Um, and so it's less than 1%. Yes. It, it's never more than 1%. Well, uh, on the top of the line, the, the large origination companies uh, who provide the, the switch and the, the facilities to submit to, they've got a yeah. little bit of a higher cut, but um, they scoop off a little bit of cream off the top. But it's, it gradually just filters down. Like in our franchise model as well, the franchisor has a very small overrider commission and then it filters down to the franchise. And uh, like the consultants in my franchise they will then get the lion's share of the commission coming into my business because they did the work. And the ones that I did myself, obviously I'll then take the lion's share myself. So I'm just gonna to talk to the guys that are out there today and they're thinking, hey, I want to become a bond originator. It's not really complicated, uh, but firstly, one needs to be educated and to be aware and savvy of all the banking products that are out there. And uh, for a business like yours, uh, where you can also bring in uh, uh, bond originators uh, underneath within your community, you, you would obviously put effort in training these people. Yes. Right. So, so as a franchisee, you, you put effort in that because that's your business. So you want to train all of your guys, make sure that they're good. That's number one. And then the second thing is that um, obviously they now need to look for the business right uh, and bringing in the business if you're not looking for the business then there is no money that's going to come to you. it's just that simple isn't it yeah exactly that so the question now of asking ourselves to say how much are board originators making so we're going to make an assumption here that uh, i've heard by the grapevine that there's literally two companies in south africa that really own the license to bond originate with all the banks is that true well, yes, there's actually three. It's uh, on a smaller scale, Multinet, Home Loans, but uh, the, the two big ones are Better Bond and Uber. And right. yeah, they, they've got uh, almost total control over the market. So our submissions run via Uber. So once again, it's just part of how you fit into your own uh, value chain or food chain rather. Right. So which then basically means that maybe the banks pay 2%. And the one percent is not that stay. high. Not not even that high. Whoa. No. Okay. Right. So I did say let's assume, uh, Christian. So <laughs> let's assume that it's a two percent that the banks are giving. So the one percent is going to stay with the parenting company, which is Uber, right? Uber bonds. And now there's this one percent now that needs to be distributed within the franchise itself. And depending on where you're sitting in, because remember, Christian, here we're trying to answer the question: How much does bond originators earn? Uh, right. Uh, so we have disassociated ourselves as investors. So me as an investor, I have disassociated myself now with saying the the bond originator is not taking money away from me because that's the other thinking here yeah, that we are trying to yeah. uh, solve for. So as an investor, as someone who's buying the property you are not paying for the services of a bond originator. However, I do think that I do pay it indirectly. because You, you pay the bank. bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the bank is going to say they want this initiation fee, water, water fee, and grandmother's fee. Um, and then that money you know, circulates and then it comes through to you. Um, that's how I think I pay you. But directly, the answer is no. Right, and then the bank then pays you. So you are actually uh, a resource that I get for free. This is the other conversation that I want to talk to a uh, savvy investor or people that are coming in to invest. Say, when you get a person like Christian, who's gonna put time on, 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 on you. I was going to say on your lap. Um, so Christian, I don't want you to dance on anyone's lap. But the thing is that when we are saying that a Christian becomes available to you, it's at no charge to you, but if you find a good bond originator who can then be able to find you good money, then that person is gold. Number one, you're not paying them. Number two, they're getting paid from, their, from the bank. And number three, you're getting the money 
to build your, um, your, your portfolio as you, you go along. Now, Christian, in conclusion with that, the real answer here now that we want to ask for, right? With all the effort that we have put in, how much then does a bond originator, um, uh, how, much, how much does the bond originator then max? You know, because that was the question. Um, yeah. To me, it almost sounds like you can work hard, you can earn your own franchise, you can work hard. The more effort you put in, the better the reward. If you don't, then there is no income. But what's your suggestion? You are the one who's an expert in this area. Yeah, so uh, the, if, if you look at the different firms, the, the commissions, if you start off as a rookie, will range between 0.15% and 0.4%. So do the maths for yourself there. If we take it at a 0.4%, that means you're earning 4,000 Rand per million. So if you want to earn 40,000 Rand per month, you will have to do 10 million Rand's worth of bonds registered. And this is one of the big things that aspiring originators need to think about because it takes at least six to eight months if you've got an existing client base to start seeing those commissions come uh, into your account on a regular basis. Because we've got all types of delays and things that can play out. I mean, your typical approach from an astute investor, if I just look at some of your partners with some of the transactions that have been standing since April last year, it's strategic. So obviously that work has been done, but I am not seeing any income yet. So it's a matter of just making sure that you put everything together in the right format and in the right approach to have that uh, consistent flow of business coming your way. Because uh, if you want to work on a 10 million Rand bond grant uh, per month, uh, calculated on say 800,000 Rand average bond, that means that you need to do quite a couple of transactions during the course of the month because not all of them will necessarily be approved or they'll take longer to approve and they won't form part of that month's figure. All kinds of things can lead to delays. So it's it's a patience game, but it, it is rewarding. And um, Christian, thanks a lot for this. What I do want to say, if you're wanting to start your own business as a, as a bond originator, then this guy here is the guy that you need to speak to. Uh, that is number one. And then number two, if you're looking for bond originations, you're wanting to get your paperwork all sorted off, you just want to see how much you qualify for, this guy here is most qualified to, to do that. I am not. But we will check you out on the next video.